as we enter into eclipse season, it's always important to do a review of what it is we are about to release. Join me here. I almost never do this, but I am giving you my September Phoenix Rising event that is exclusive only to my Ignite Your Wings Tools for Transformation members. And this is an opportunity for you during this eclipse season to review your last month, to see what the energies were for the month of September so that you can get a handle on what it is that you want to intentionally release so that you can go into this eclipse season feeling really confident and having a clear plan of what is to come. Stay tuned. Uh, and welcome, welcome. So again, welcome fabulous Phoenixes to our Phoenix Rising event for the month of September. I can't believe we're in the we're going into the ninth month. And I believe today is the 28th. So two days from now or a day and a half from now, we also have a super blue moon. Um, that only happens like once every, I don't know, eight years or 10 years or something crazy like that. So there's a lot of really cool energy that we are floating around in. And if you guys have watched the new moon musings, um, you know that there's a lot of really cool energy swirling around us today. Um, so what are we going to be doing today? As always, we're releasing the old and stale and creating room for the new in your life by engaging with the energies of our now. So we're going to start with our burning process. So setting the tone. Um, Kellyanne, I see that you're driving, so I don't want you to close your eyes. Um, I will do the eye closing for you. Um, anyone else who's not driving, just uh, just close your eyes for a second. Kind of just tune out the world and tune into your heart space today. And I want you just to take a minute right now to connect. As you're connecting with the heart space, just kind of connect with the things that have been a real joy or a, a boon for you in this past month in August. Just, you know, maybe kind of think about or highlight three things that you're really grateful for, for the month of August. And as you're thinking about these events or celebrations, wins, um, situations, tap into how you're feeling. You know, are you feeling relieved? Are you feeling overjoyed? Are you feeling excited? Are you feeling complete, resolved? And whatever those feelings are, I want you to sort of visualize or just know or think about as you're putting them into your heart space how that feeling expands and maybe expands into all areas of the body the idea here being that we are training the body, we're reminding the body of these feelings that we want to generate more of. And just take a quick moment of gratitude. And all the rest of the things and the stuff, you know, obviously we're going to do a group release here, but all the rest of it that we need to release. I don't want you to today to highlight or to focus on the individual things you're releasing. What I'd like you to do is um, 
pick a color of a balloon. Pick a color, a balloon color, and I want you to blow out with your breath. Imagine that you're blowing out into the balloon, blowing up the balloon with all of the other stuff. We just connected to the things we're celebrating. Now we're going to blow everything else out into the balloon. And the idea here is not to connect to the feelings and the emotions of the, the not so great or the what we're letting go. It's more of a just a simple, you know, I like to say I've got the suitcase in my hand and I just open my hand and drop it. It's that kind of energy that we're just blowing that all into the balloon. And when you feel that you've sort of released everything into that balloon, tie it up in your mind. And don't let it go yet. Don't release it yet. We're going to do that with the flame. And now take a moment to carry on with some of the feeling, the good feelings that you had um, for August, that you celebrated for August. You're going to carry that through to September and you're going to add one more feeling that you would like to manifest for yourself throughout the month of September, throughout all of your activities, um, throughout your thoughts, throughout your heart space, your soul space. One more overall feeling. And this feeling is going to be the string that you tie to the balloon. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. I feel like we're doing something a little bit different today. So I'm not asking the same questions today. We're, we're releasing through a visualization. So now I'm going to go right to the lighting of the flame. And I want you to sort of envision that you're lighting the end of the string. And you can release it and you can watch the flame uh, expand and release the manifestation, the happiness, the joy, the whatever it is that you're adding, all of those delicious feelings that you are grateful for and that you are manifesting to carry on into September. And because of all that happiness and joy, it's going to, I want to say, overtake and take on the release of everything in the balloon. So you, of course, can watch the flame if um, that suits you today, or you can just continue on with the visualization that we've got going on. And here we go. We're going to embrace the shift. Wow, and I, I didn't mean to do this, but this is perfect. I have, I blew out the white candle and then we also have the the paper that's burning. And for a while there were two different colored streams of smoke. Um, so it really kind of reflected the string and then the release of what we're letting go. So that was really cool. And there's a lot of um, fullness today. There's a um, lingering, there's a, I want to say fullness and slowness. I feel September is going to be quite a sensual month for a lot of us. Um, what you want to manifest, what you want to make more of, the best way to do that is by connecting to the body, connecting to your sensuality, really being present, enjoying the beauty of life, um, the beauty of your now. Um, it's, 
I also am hearing slow and steady wins the race. So I feel that September is going to be a month where um, there's going to be a lot of ascension, uh, sort of ascension energy or, or movement forward energy. Uh, but mm, it's up to you to discern whether or not you want to move that quickly. So slow and steady is going to win the race. You might you might run to the to the starting line, get all your your ducks in a row, and then allow things to sort of unfold organically. So that's really really uh, important. Um, the smoke has dissipated now, so I feel that it's it's clean. This is going to be a clean month or a month where by the end of this this energy, you're going to have clarity. There's going to be nothing left undone or unsaid or unspoken or um or nothing left to plan in the container of the month itself so whatever you're completing or, or working towards in the month itself so let's take a quick moment now to repeat our affirmation because it's so important to our affirmations repeat after me with this beautiful flame I intentionally release this energy out into the universe with love for its lessons and gifts. It transmutes into a lighter, brighter form to offer love and peace to those in need. I open my heart and soul space now to receive the energy that is more in alignment with my current path. I feel into the spaces within to absorb this energy now. Thank you, universe, for this positive shift. I am free. Yay. All right, let's move into the card energy. See what is coming up for us in September. Woo. So we are uh, pulling cards today from a brand new Oracle deck. I got it about probably about a week ago now. I've been working with it off and on. It's the Oracle of Delphi, Susie Cherub. So you guys will recognize the name Susie Cherub. Um, she also does the water temple oracle that we like so much that everybody always is ooing and aahing over the imagery. So really excited to see what's coming up for us. So uh, based on our current energies, what is wanting to shift in your life this month? What is the theme, the Phoenix theme for September? Medium, culminate, consult, connect and convey ooh it looks like um it looks a little bit like the chariot card in the tarot so what i what is standing out to me actually is the consult and the convey uh what is it that you are really trying to connect with and connect to this month for yourself on an individual level on a personal level so i want to say i'm getting a lot of hits around the internal expression versus the external expression of things. Um, you want to recognize that you're going to need to consult with others in order to be able to uh, get the most bang for your buck. So I feel in 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 ways, I, I keep seeing the three of pentacles in my head as well, the collaboration. And, and that's not anything that's on this card, although it is a C word. Um, culminate, consult, connect, convey. I'm feeling like the collaboration is necessary in order for you to be able to uh, bring what it is from inside out or to have the vehicle through which it can come out and shine. So to clarify, we all have the power within us. We don't need anyone else to really do um, the core essence of what we're trying to do, but we are here on this planet to connect. 
And the energies in September, I feel, are very much about opening us up to better connections, stronger connections, more aligned connections to the to our goals, to what it is that we're trying to to um, connect to. And it's interesting the the um, keyword here, the main keyword is medium. So using the medium through which you're going to shine your light, uh, the vehicle through which you're going to shine your light. It's not that you absolutely have to have someone do it for you. It's more about collaborating with someone who can make it a little easier or who can provide a way for you to shine your light in more um, in brighter ways, in more confident ways, and in ways that I want to say make sense. I feel almost like um, we're all going to be in this sort of headspace of feeling a bit fuzzy or feeling a bit foggy and when you can't you know you might have a couple of ideas about about something that you want to create or the way you want something to turn out but there's like one piece missing for example and you just kind of have a conversation about an aspect of it with somebody and all of a sudden they say something that just it, there, there's the missing piece there's what you know really connects for us I feel like that's what we're inviting, being invited into is consulting with others so that we can convey more succinctly and more brightly what it is that we're here to put out into the world. Um, from a chariot perspective, I find it also very interesting that, you know, the two dogs and, and the person sort of in the center and she's on this um this beautiful pink crystal ball. Uh, from a chariot's perspective, we are still in the year of the chariot it is a seven year and so i feel this is also um a, a statement about the where the collective energies are and she's sitting on a pink a pink crystal ball which is all about unconditional love self-love self-care which is that internal piece but i want to say unconditional love so when you're consulting somebody you're consulting somebody because you want to be able to convey more unconditional love out into the world and the chariot is the vehicle that is going to get you there. Um, I also love these two beautiful white wolves, or or we could say, you know, Siberian huskies, um, depending on how you feel. Um, they're staring right into your soul, but they're staring into your soul, not from a, I see you, and I'm, you know, I got my eye on you. It's more of a, I see you. I see you and I'm here to help. I'm also hearing, this isn't going to be a message for everyone, but I feel like it's going to resonate with some. Uh, there's even though there's two wolves here, I feel lone wolf and and seeing this as being uh, a reflection, um, you know, sort of the, the parallel, the 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 right and the left, the black and the white, the up and the down kind of thing, the duality. Um, lone wolf is not the route to take this month. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out and ask even. Oh, I'm hearing a, an example, too. Even if you reach out to someone that you're kind of like, okay, I've not ever really had a whole lot of success with this, but I'm going to reach out anyway, just to sort of see. Don't look at it as a, a pass or a fail. Look at it more as it's about the connection. It's about the the collaboration and the the um, what you're going to convey. It's a really interesting message, but it's it's not a time for lone wolves. Not a time for lone wolves this month. All right. What do you need to release or to open to to embrace this shift and get closer to your desired outcomes this month? Oh, this is good. Devotee or devotee. Dedicate, inspire, acquire, and emerge. It's a 22. I love the 22. We've got a master number. So definitely feeling here that um, we need to, I want to say, kind of let go of the rat race, kind of let go of expectations that either we place upon ourselves or that society is placing upon us right now and kind of be very devoted to self and source. Again, I'm getting a lot of this internal messaging. And then, you know, I want to say intentional collab 
intentional interaction with others to ask specific things about what you're trying to um, to manifest. But ultimately, I feel like it's an internal quest. It's self and source. Number two, and we're getting the 22, the sort of that master number 22 energy, it's about the plan. What are you planning? It's also about the collaboration, the but not collaboration with more than one. It's that um, you and one other person, pairing, partnership, union. Um, it can represent relationship, but not in terms of like romantic specifically, just in terms of relationships. And I mentioned connection. I feel almost like this needs to be the, the word connection needs to be on here because I feel like that's really what we're looking at is how are we choosing to connect with ourselves and with others so that there's more meaning behind uh, what we're saying, what we're asking for, and what we're giving. Uh, I feel very much that uh, it might be a goal for all of us to... Oh, so it's kind of like... Um, I just had an, an, an example in my head, but, um, and it's, it's gone. So hopefully it'll come back, but I feel like it's understanding that we can have a plan. We can create a plan. We can have something going on in our head when we put it out there, when we verbalize it, when we put action steps behind it, it becomes, it's bigger than the both of us, baby. Like it becomes something more. It, it we breathe life into it and so being the the devotee to self and source it's almost like you're releasing you're letting go of the need to control it and you're opening to allowing it to have a life of its own i feel like the underlying thing here is dedicate yourself to not having any control over anything and how does that feel for you? How does that inspire you? How does that free you, liberate you? Um, there's much that's going to come through this month and next on a collective level that I feel is going to be revealing. And this month I feel is going to... Any inspirations that you have, it's like laying foundation. It's preparing you for what is to come. And I'm not going to comment on, you know, whether what is to come, we're going to judge, judge it as good, bad, or indifferent. It's more, it's just laying a foundation for what is coming. And when you have your solid foundation within your core, when you have that solid foundation with self and source, everything else is secondary. That's how you're filling your love cup. And you will be inspired in a different way. And some of that inspiration, like I said, can come from the, the people that you're engaging with, that you're intentionally interacting with. But ultimately, it starts from within. It's the, what is my relationship to source? How am I feeling about these visions that I have? How am I feeling about my life in general? Um, what am I ready to tweak? What am I ready to, to shift, to open up, to open into? So I talked about there's there's going to be a, an energy of acceleration, but also the slow and steady wins the race. And it's up to you to decide which sort of which energy you want to take with that. Um, I feel also like I feel this sort of contemplative mood that there's going to be a lot that presents itself, you know, spoiled for choice, tons of choice, tons of option that comes across your path. Don't be waylaid by this idea that you've got to say yes to all of it, or you've got to examine all of it, um, you know, uh, put it in the parking lot for later, you know, just revisit it when you feel that the time is right and the energy opens you up to that. There will be an emergence, but
but I feel that the emergence is going to be slower and the emergence is going to happen more in October than it is in September, but it's going to happen through how you handle what is presented to you in September. Mm, it's like pulling teeth today. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of high, I want to say high frequency downloading today. How does this theme connect you to love in your life this month? <laughs> romantic relationship, those seeking love or love of self. We've got the love maker. <laughs> so that's perfect. Um, love, give, receive, and be. Okay, so I'm actually going to read this as love of self today. Um, primarily, mostly, uh, because I feel like that's what we're leaning into this month is it's not an, it's not a month of isolation. It's just a month of being more internal. And um, as a love maker, how do you receive? You know, there's a there's a real flux and flow lately, and it's one of the themes of our month of our year of this year is uh, reciprocity, reciprocal relationships. Um, the first relationship, and I want to say the only relationship that matters right now is your love of self and source your relationship with your internal guidance, your relationship with, you know, the spirit that runs through all of it, the energy that is in everything. And so the lovemaker is inviting you and encouraging you here to connect with your sacral chakra. I mentioned earlier about sensuality. This would be the sensuality card. This is very much the, the sacral chakra energy with the orange and, you know, she's, bare in her breasts for all to see, right? I mean, there's a sensuality to this card, but she's also laughing. She's having fun. She's not inhibited. And I feel like it is really about the the lovemaking needs to, to come from within first. You know, you, how do you know how to be a good partner or to to connect to the frequency of love, to, to show others how you wish to be treated unless you know for yourself how you wish to be treated. Sometimes we have to, you know, the chicken and the egg, sometimes we're the ones who have to figure it out. You know, we have to learn it. And I feel that some of you, some of you, some of us, I should say, some of us are going to be relearning um, that love of self piece this month. And it's going to be through sensuality. It's going to be through experiences in the physical that keep you in the body. You know, so many of us, I mean, star seeds, light workers, um, you know, energetic healers, because of all of the things and the stuff that we're in, that the world is in right now, we we feel better when we're disconnected from the body and we're floating up in the ethers. We enjoy being in that higher frequency space and it sometimes feels safer to do so. This is an invitation to say, uh, 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 it's not safer and it's not, it's not honoring what you came here to do. So you're here in this, in this physical body, enjoy what this physical body offers to you. Yeah. You're feeling all of it. You're feeling the heaviness, the sadness, the despair, the, you know, whatever it is that we're feeling based on what we're seeing or witnessing or what's going on in our world. We also have the capacity for all of the other stuff as well. So I feel like this is a message for sensuality within the physical so that you can be grounded and centered. I'm also having deja vu. I wonder if this came through last month or the month before, but this is really, really strong. You cannot give love unless you understand what it is to be loved. So I feel like all of us this month are going to be giving ourselves the opportunity to learn what it means to love ourselves. Because if we are making, and I don't mean it in a cheesy sexual way, but if we are making love from within our own body and presenting that out into the world, I mean, that is a full and overflowing love cup, right? And if we talk about love as frequency, not as feeling, now we're cooking with gas because that is the high level of frequency that we're all looking to connect with. That is our dedication to self and source. Mm. I love how it's all kind of lining up. That's so cool. All right. What do you need to consider around family relationships? 
So we've got original, extended, and chosen family. Oh, really cool. So we got a four here. It's our second four. So we've actually got two fours, a five, and a six, which I think is interesting. The 22 is a master number. So it is a four, but really we don't break it down. But, you know, you know me in numbers. So four, dancer, shift, dance, and rapture and embody. So when we're talking about family relationships, I, I keep hearing go big or go home. I feel like this month, it's really going to be about if we're not focusing so much on all the things and the stuff that needs to get done. And we're more in that space of being very present with what is presented to us in our now. It gives us some freedom, some latitude to have a little more fun with that family relationship and family dynamic. Uh, dance. So whenever the dance comes up, it also indicates that there's a certain level of energy that needs movement. It needs to be shifted, broken up, um, dissolved, um, repurposed. Uh, Humpty Dumpty scattered and put back together differently. So with your family dynamics, with your family relationships, try things a little bit different this month. Mm, really be in a space of you can observe if you're used to being the person who gives the the advice or whatever all the time, maybe try the opposite where you just remain quiet and listen and observe. And if you're the person who usually just listens and observes, you know, throw out an opinion or two there and see how it's received. Um, the word that is really standing out to me in all of this is enrapture. And I feel like that's kind of tied into the sort of the lovemaker um, piece, because when we think of enrapture, I mean, that's a powerful word. There's a lot of energy and and it's not just sort of your basic Mark One energy. I mean, enrapture, what does that mean? Oh, I'm, I'm overtaken with this feeling, with this emotion. I'm, I'm, um, I'm sway, I'm not swaying to the music. I'm completely lost in the rhythm or lost in the notes. Um, our family deserves this side of ourselves. And this is a side of ourselves. I feel, and I feel like I'm talking to everyone who's watching this today. We often hide that side of ourselves or we give a little bit, but we've never gone the whole hundred percent. This is a month where maybe you want to just sort of explore what the whole hundred percent might look like. Yeah, your family might be like, okay, you're cuckoo cachoo and, you know, like save the drama for your mama, whatever they're going to say. Or they could say, oh my God, I, I had no idea you were able to do that. Like, I didn't know that about you. And I just learned something new and thank you for sharing that. So Test the limits, um, push the boundaries, test the extremes a little bit and do it through movement. Understanding that energetically, it's your job, it's your responsibility to recognize when there's stuck energy and when you can shift it and move it. And sometimes it's just, okay, I've been doing this in a certain way for a really long time. Let me try the opposite or let me try you know, just sort of uh, tweaking the degrees, doing a 45 degree angle from what I normally do rather than, you know, the full 180. Use your discernment around that. What can you expect around your friendship bonds? Oh, this is a great one. Teacher. Um, it's also a four, folks. Okay, so what does four mean? Because we now have three fours. Four is that foundation. I was talking about the foundational energy, September being a foundational month for what is coming up in October. So we've got a 31, which is a four. Learn, upskill, educate, and prepare. And look at the figure in the portal window. She's in the water, but she's also in the sunlight. So I'm seeing the fire and the water. Before I even look into the the words and the messages in particular. When we're talking about friendship bonds, I feel that this month is going to require a lot of balance. Um, if you're the fire and your friend brings the water, accept the water. It's there to cool you off. It's not there to put your light out. It's there to cool you off, to help you to not burn out. Likewise, if you're the water, you're able to allow that fire to ignite some more of the passions, to feel things, more things that you want to feel rather than, I want to say, kind of being in, again, lots of shift and change, but in small, subtle ways that come from the internal. Um, 
this owl, you know, there's this beautiful owl that is overseeing all of it. And then we've got the sacred geometry that is kind of housing this particular portal. Uh, I'm hearing Metatron and feeling that Metatron is coming through to help us with our friendships this month. Um, to allow there to be a certain level. Metatron is about empowerment. Metatron is also very much about um, higher frequency energies and how to work with them. Uh, I feel like the friendship department is where a lot of the activity is going to happen. That's where we're really going to have safe space to, to utilize our energy, to learn about the different energies that are around us that are you know, we, we talk about collaboration. It's the friendships that you're going to reach out to and collaborate with to get that that movement going, to get that flow going. And all of it has to do with the foundation that we are laying for what is to come in October. Mm, very interesting. What do you need to know about your career path or your professional relationships? And if you're retired, what do you need to know about your contributions to the collective at this time. Oh, this is great. Odyssey, and it's an 835 quest, offer, treasure, and celebrate. So loving this card, when we're talking about career, what I'm really fixated on here is the bridge. So she sees the, you know, the library or the house or the castle or, you know, whatever we feel that it, it, it is. And she's on the other side. We could say she, that's her home and she's, left it for a while, taken a, taken a stroll and she's coming back in. Or we can say, um, I've arrived at the next, uh, the next level, the next vision. And I feel for a lot of us, we are going to be getting a fresh new vision about what that career path is going to look like. And it's really about what I'm focused on is the bridge. So you guys know, I talk a lot about the, you know, the, the Phoenix um, growing and emerging is really that suspension bridge between Island A and Island B. I'm not who I was, but I'm not quite who I'm becoming. I don't really have a clear vision yet, but I'm on the path. You know, I'm walking towards something because I, I need to walk away from what no longer is or can no longer be. And what I'm really drawn to here is that I feel like for all of us, there is this energy and career and contributions to the collective. We're on the bridge. We're doing different things. There's an energy that says, either I need to do something different, like I'm shifting my career, or I need to review my processes because there's something, there's a chink in the armor. There's a process that feels static or feels like I'm stuck on the loop and I could smooth that out. It's not that I have to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but in order for me to get to that next level, that next place, um, that next goal, I have to do something different. I have to walk across that bridge. Um, the bridge is sturdy. The bridge is going to get you where you need to go. It's going to keep you elevated from getting too caught up in your feelings and emotions, um, that, that ocean of emotion. And by the way, the water feels pretty calm here anyway. So I don't feel a lot of disruption with it, but I do definitely feel that you are getting ready to traverse a new path. So be open to what that contains for you. And with all of the, I'm seeing all of the, the green and the growth, this next path is going to be lush growth. And I, I want to say, dare I say, not the kind of growth where we have to groan because there's going to be a lot of pain associated with it. I feel more the growth that comes from, from a, a good solid walk, you know, a strenuous walk, but not a bad walk, a walk that gets your heart rate going gets you feeling good, gets you releasing, detoxifying, also gets you um, breathing cleaner air. Um, and there's fulfillment in what that looks like. So I feel this, again, preparatory energy. Also the eight, the eight is mastery. The eight is abundance. So yay, that it's not going to be torturous growth. It's actually going to be the kind of growth that you can sink your teeth into. So what do you need to know around your financial path this month? Mm, this is interesting. Caretaker, it's a two, 20. End, reunite, serve, 
a company. Mm. Just give me a second. I want to look at the card. So I'm drawn to the dog who looks a bit constrained. He's a bit unhappy. He's feeling a bit um, like he's being controlled, held back, but he really wants to go for something. Um, we've got sort of King Triton, it looks like. He's got sort of a, an interesting Triton that he's holding. And then um, uh, we've got another figure here. It might be Aphrodite, a goddess of some kind. She's holding her crown in her hand and she's pink. So thank you for humoring me with that and being patient to see the image. Um, I'm really feeling here that when we are talking about the financial path, it's important for us to understand that we may be ready to invest, ready to go, ready to, um, to not feel that level of limitation. But I want to say there is still something that is and I don't feel like he's doing it in a in a mean way or an aggressive way. I feel like he's got the he's got the light right now. So he actually can see what's to come. He can see what what is initially ahead. And the dog, I feel like we're kind of the dog that is, you know, ready to go. He's a little more in the darkness. Uh, darkness isn't bad. It's just the unknown. So I feel like what we need to know around our financial path is that sometimes a no is protection. Sometimes it's holding us back for a reason. So I would say be conservative in your spending this month. Um, don't sign any contracts. Now we're in Mercury retrograde. So that kind of goes without saying when we're in a Mercury retrograde as well until October 4th. Um, but I want to say even separate from that, it's don't sign any contracts. Don't, don't make any major decisions around your finances for this month be more in planning mode and i want to say not everything is going to be as it appears to be so um you're being a caretaker for yourself you're reining in um your desire to hit the ground running and it's not that that's a bad desire. I feel like it's really more about timing. Um, the word that is really standing out to me here is a company. So we've talked a lot about reaching out to others, right? Like going within, figuring out what that is, and then reaching out to others for that collaboration. You can be accompanied on this path. You are being accompanied. And anything that feels like it's holding you back, it probably is for good reason. So just be patient. I hate that word. That's one of the one of the words that is not in my favorite part of my vocabulary. And yet that's really what it is, is the patience. And, you know, this Aphrodite character, um, she's in the back. She's all in pink. I feel that's very reflective of the Venus. Uh, we're in Venus retrograde right now. I can't remember when we're coming out of Venus retrograde, but it would not surprise me if it's towards the end of this month, because I feel like when she when she goes direct, um, there's a release of that, um, the, the self-love and the self-care. It really taps into that the lovemaker card as well in, and the devotee. Um, it's making yourself the priority. So you are your own caretaker and you're making a plan for what's coming next. And when Venus energy shifts and goes direct, you will feel the release of those constraints um, and, and the timing will be right. So listen to the timing. Okay, we have two cards for this next one. Uh, what can support your mental health? Uh, so we've got a 36 luminary. That's a nine. Activate, brighten, impact, and determine. Ooh. So um, I really feel like this month, what can support your mental health is really uh, remaining activated in your higher frequency energy. So it's a month where you don't want to really be in your head a whole lot. We talk about the plan, but I want to say you want to talk about the plan after you've been inspired. So the, the plan that comes after the inspiration, it comes out of source energy. It comes out of that connection to self and source rather than out of the, the, um, the ego space that may be coming from a, a place of fright, fear, uh, fear of the unknown, fear of change, fear of what's going on. And then it triggers that monkey mind space. Um, so luminary, I feel like it's 
receiving the inspiration. Don't do anything unless it was actually truly inspired by your devoted connection to self and source. Um, you get to determine what that is, but it's all about your activation. If you don't feel activated or if you're not sure, did I receive this in intuitionally? Um, is this an intuitional inspiration or is this ego? If you don't have the, the, the clear answer, the clear path, don't do it. Wait for another sign. Just wait. Again, patience. You're taking care of yourself by doing that. The second card I got for this is 26, so another eight, empath, feel, relate, understand, and console. And look, it's another pink. We got so much pink going on in this reading, the beautiful pink rose. So again, that unconditional love, self-love, self-care. Um, so it's interesting that we're getting the empath in the mental space. And I've just given you a message about kind of tuning the, the mental energy out, you know, not, not focusing so much on that or making that the focus. This I feel is reinforcing that you want to feel into, uh, and I want to say, um, uh, mm, frequency feel, not emotionally feel. You want a frequency feel into your mental health space. Um, that empath energy, you being an empath, if, if you identify with that, it's understanding that, yeah, sometimes I have a hard time discerning where I end and another person begins. If I'm, if I'm feeling that, then I need to establish some more healthy boundaries. I need to go into that self-love and self-care space before I make any decisions that come from here directly. So mm, I feel like we're just kind of doing a checkup from the neck up and we're, we're choosing not to act from this space so much in September. We're choosing not to connect in that way. Uh, where are you at emotionally? What can assist you this month in that area? Sage 28. So this is our first one, the 10, the new beginnings based on an already established foundation. Advise, acquire, invest, accumulate. So invest in yourself, acquire the right kind of messaging, support, guidance, resource from those that you're, you're creatively collaborating with, that you're intentionally collaborating with. All of this is going to allow you to, I said earlier, you know, we, we let go of control and allow things to be. Um, I feel that this is really helping you when you invest in yourself. It's not that you're taking control of something or trying to change the outcome. You're simply saying, I'm the best bet that I'll ever make. I'm the best investment that I will ever make in myself. And if we are thinking about how I am shifting and changing and I'm learning about myself so that I can teach this new version of myself to others so that I understand clearly what my needs are, this makes perfect sense. I'm going to invest in myself emotionally and I'm going to be, I'm hearing I'm going to be methodical about it from that heart-based space. So I know that's, that's contradictory because methodical is the mind, but everything this month is saying, no, we're getting out of our heads. We're in our bodies. We're in our hearts. It's not about the mental energy. It's kind of like saying, uh, what does this color taste like? Well, how does, you know, we experience color visually. Well, when you look at it or when you are in it, what does it taste like to you? It's playing with the senses. It's moving things around. So how can you bring some of those mentally charged words into your emotional space? And how can you bring some of those, you know, physical um, attributes into the mind? You know, it's, it's uh, mind bending. It's bending the ways and the approaches that we're taking. Uh, how is your physical body being affected by your choices? This is always a good one. Oracle number five, lead, ask, listen, and trust. She's all in red. So I'm very, very much connecting to the root chakra here. Um, and I feel like your body is saying, listen to me. Ask me how I feel. Ask me what I need. And then trust. That, that not only what you're hearing or feeling or what I'm telling you is the truth, 
but trust in your ability to be able to, to give me what I need. Having conversation, direct conversation with the body, with your body. I'm having such deja vu. I feel like we have had these similar messages before. So we're definitely in an energy right now where the body wants to go along for the ride. We're too much floating around up here because it's been so intense, you know, and I feel like the body's kind of saying, okay, you've had the break that you need. I got to be part of this. I got to be part of all of it. If you want wholeness, it's head, heart, soul, mind, body, spirit. It's all of us together. Let me be the vehicle to get you where, where you need to be. You are safe. You are secure. You are protected. I have the resources within me to get you where you need to be. She's got these two beautiful lights um, coming from her hands. I feel there's also a message here about the musician, the musician, sorry, the magicianship um, using the magic, the, the energy that comes from the body through our hands and through our feet. That's chakra energy. Putting your hands on your own body, on your head, on your heart different areas of the body where you might be feeling a bit out of balance. You might be feeling like mm, this, I don't feel attached to this part of my body. Use the energy that's coming through your palms, through your feet to provide your own healing and your own, I want to say clarification. Interesting. All right. What do you need to understand around your energy levels? What are you investing in or receiving? And is this in balance? <laughs> Number one, I love it. Uh, priestess, begin, perceive, predict, prophesize. So this to me is very um, high priestess energy. So what do you need to understand around your energy levels? It's understanding that my energy levels are being directly affected by my intuition by what it is I'm receiving from self and source. And it's helping me to connect, look at all the red. It's helping me to connect to my root chakra, which is my body, my acceptance of my physicality. This body holds my soul. So interesting that we have the, what are you investing in or receiving? And we had the invest card um, with the sage, which also is a one um coming into this mix as well so i feel like what you want to understand is none of the rest of any of it matters unless it has come through you from source or come from you through source that's what needs to be focused on how do you balance it i want to say by checking in with yourself first and then deciding whom you would like to collaborate with, if at all, you need to. And keep in mind as well, it is connection to self and source, but it is also that connection to our fellow humans that we are also trying to open ourselves up to this month. So it's a balancing act. And I feel like she's kind of showing that a little bit here as well. She's got you know, two different things in her hands. She's balancing some some items, some things, but she's standing tall. She's confident in what it is that she's doing, what it is that she's offering. She's not nervous about it. Um, she's simply owning it. We also have water at the bottom and we've got a lot of air energy as well. And a little bit of the sun, a little bit of the fire that's, that's sort of peeking through. But I feel that this is the water and the air. So it's the oxygenation, needing more oxygen, needing more connection to our higher frequencies through the physical body. So again, a lot of the same themes that are coming through tonight in the cards. That's really powerful. She's got a lot of this sort of wispy energy that's reminding me of the smoke um, that we had, the way the smoke was exiting the jar today which was fullness and sort of that beautiful expansion that it was taking and then it was you know sort of slowing itself down um all right how can you use the phoenix energy swirling in your life right now to your advantage this month Ooh, interesting so we got another eight we've got a, we've had a few eights a lot of fours uh, quite a few twos. There's just a lot of interesting 
stuff going on numerologically here. Uh, 44, so another master number. 44, strategist, counsel, project, lobby, and advise. Um, I feel very much that this is basically saying, okay, we've told you to you know, be in the physical and be sensual and to do all of these things. And when we're talking about this medium to, you know, to convey, um, to connect and to convey, to consult others, uh, you want to be a, you want to be strategic about it. You want to make sure that you're not just telling everybody and anybody you want to be strategic about who you're involving in or who you're inviting into your energy levels and your energy spaces. And I just told you, I spent all that time telling you to stay out of your head, to not let your head rule the roost. And yet we've got this sort of thinker energy, the strategist. And what is a strategy? It's someone who thinks about the ins and outs and the ways to, to do this fun stuff. What I'm hearing is because it's an ascended master, connect with the ascended masters in your dream team and allow them to do the strategy work for you so that it can still remain something that comes in through the high priestess energy. It's the intuition. Allow that strategy to come through you. It can come from you, but it's got to come from here. It can't come from here for you. That's not what we're doing this month. Um, also on this card, I'm seeing a lot of that checkerboard flooring. And whenever I see checkerboard flooring, it, it always reminds me of the game of life. And so you want to really recognize that as you are consulting and conveying and making these connections, um, that it is part of the game of life. So be strategic from that perspective. Don't take things so personally. Understand that you always can remove your chess piece from the board for a time and observe before you dive back into the game again. So using this energy means, yes, I can involve others. That's kind of the goal is to open myself up to create a little more connection with others, but I can do that in a very smart, very sharp, very intentional way. Wow. My mind is kind of blown. This was very high frequency. I feel like it's not only the words today, but a lot of shifting energy. I feel like we're all going to feel very different <laughs> at the end of this um, this session today, uh, myself included. I'm already feeling kind of lightheaded. Um, so we we may all want to um, you know have a big old jug of water after this because there's going to be some detoxing. So based on the cards so far, we've got our inspired spark time. What areas of focus stand out to you that you can transform to reach your highest and best outcomes this month? So I'll just show you all of the cards. That medium, that devotee, love maker. That one was super powerful. I feel like that one really highlights a lot of what they were trying to convey. The dancer, our second four. Uh, this is our third four, the teacher. Odyssey. Caretaker. These two together, the luminary and the empath. Sage, Oracle, Priestess, and the Strategist of 44. All right. So, Marianne, I'm going to go into my happy place right now and get prepared for some empowered channeling time. Ask our guides what message can support us on our path this month as we think about September. What is still unknown that needs to be welcomed so we can thrive? All right, I'm going to just grab my crystal because I'm feeling like I, speaking of grounding, I need some grounding and some support.
Greetings, dear souls. I am Archangel Raphael, and I am honored to be coming in to speak with all of you today. You have received such powerful messages for this of your September months coming up. And from the angelic perspective, this is a month of deep excitement there will be much shift and change. And you are right that there is quite a bit that will be transpiring on an internal level. But it is important to understand that everything that goes on within must eventually be reflected out. And that is why the message of connection has come through so strongly for you. For there is no true growth on this planet if you are only doing internal work and keeping it to yourself. Humanity learns from you because you walk the talk and lead by example. And much of this foundation that you have spoken of today is occurring now so that you can be that clear shining example. Each of you now has been feeling the stirrings of a deeper awareness and activation that is coming through for you at this time. It is because you are to be a reflection for all of the human souls that you encounter. This is on purpose, and this is happening at this time right now in the present moment. You are seeing it in your political environment. You are seeing it on a global scale. You are seeing it within your larger and smaller communities. It is a time where the expression of the inner self is desired. Think of it in these terms. You have more bravery and courage because you have awakened. You have accepted a certain level of the illusion that often can be presented on this earthly plane. Not everyone that you encounter has had this same level of awareness or awakening. Your consciousness has increased, and that is your purpose here, to increase your consciousness and then to show others how it is done. It is not about forcing your will or forcing this realization upon anyone that you encounter, but it is to your advantage and mm, I would say your responsibility to live as though that is your truth, to shine that brightly, to wear it as a coat of arms, if you will, so that those who notice it feel comfortable to ask you about it. They notice that your life somehow comes across perhaps in smoother ways or that you run into big rocky paths or huge boulders in your path and you handle it with grace. You handle it with a certain understanding that it is all meant to be and that it is happening for that greater purpose. Many humans on your planet today do not have that level of bravery and courage. And yet you do. This is the foundational growth that is being created for you at this time. The awareness and understanding that you've reached a particular level, that you will continue to rise into higher heights but you don't want to go too high quite yet until the human component has had the opportunity to witness what they can aspire to, what they can become. That is all for now, dear souls. Feel into this message in any way you wish. Know that it has been delivered with the utmost love and care and understanding for the plight that you often face 
and also the joy that you have the ability to experience in each and every moment. We in the angelic realm do not have such opportunity to experience feeling so potently. We are in awe of your service to humanity. Be well. Something else. Hmm. Give you a minute to come back here. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm so dizzy today. <laughs> just like, I feel like, okay, so I probably said this before, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but in my channeling journey, which has been going on now for probably eight years, but the last four to five have been really intense and powerful. It's such a, a unique experience when I'm channeling these different beings, these different energies. Archangel Raphael came through really strong and really direct today. He's one that I've worked with for a really long time. But I've been noticing that the ones that I've worked with for a really long time, they haven't been coming in. I've been getting new ones coming in all the time. So that when the old ones come in, it's almost like I have to like, get to know them in a different way or like they're just more clear and and a little more intense honestly in the way they come through about four years ago when i was really opening up to all of this stuff i when i channeled i was off in la la land i would have to record myself or have someone record me because i could not like continue sentences unless i was really like fully in and it was exhausting to do it still takes a lot of energy out of me today but i'm noticing now it's the different it's the different beings that come in where i'm like okay this one is really high frequency because it's like pulling teeth to get the information i feel like i'm back when i was starting from square one and really at kind of you know again lost in la la land and then there are other ones when it's just like foom, foom, foom. but it takes a different i don't want to say a toll on my body but it just my body uh, receives it differently. It's just, it's wild. I did uh, two channeled wisdom um, experiences today, earlier today, uh, channeled two beings that I had not ever channeled before. That was a trip. Um, after the first one, I had to go lay down. <laughs> like I had to physically lay down after it was sort of wrapping up. So you know, I'm learning, even after all of these years of doing all of this stuff, I'm still learning and evolving in this process. And it still kind of blows my mind how these beings um, affect me, even, you know, to this day, I, I, I like to think, okay, I got this. I got it. I'm, I'm good. I'm covered. No, I don't got it. Sometimes <laughs> it's like, okay, you're showing me that there's more, there's more. So rein it in get focused, drink your water and you'll be fine. <laughs> All right, enough about me. Let's get to some questions. To join us live every single month for this event and so much more, we would love to invite you into our community, Ignite Your Wings, Tools for Transformation. We are always focusing on various things that help us to elevate and grow and to navigate the chaos and the transformation that we are always going through. Open enrollment is now. I don't know how long I'm going to keep it open for. So I would say, if you wanna join, now is the time, seize the day. $24.97 a month. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can come and check it out. And you also get an added bonus of being part of my free Black Feather community where we have um, a, a gathering every month called A Gathering of Phoenixes. And it's an opportunity to connect with like-minded, like-hearted souls to talk all things metaphysical. Would love to see you there. Take care and transform well.